the Go Berserk with Email podcast with Navy nuclear engineer turned email software developer, Troy Broussard. So calm. I'm pissed off, but I'm telling this because I am teaching you how to think differently and how to test differently. So patient. And Ben, that's put a half a million dollars into this company too, is being told that nobody can find the goddamn bug. So charitable. I'm going to start paying bounties every time somebody finds a bug. We're going to deduct $10 that week. So trusting. Do not assume that anything works. Assume that nothing works. And so sweet. It makes sugar taste just like salt. I want to play into the sexiness of marketing automation, but I also want to slap the complexity of it. The Go Berserk with Email podcast begins now. We're back once again, boys and girls, for another Go Berserk with email show. Troy, what do you have for us today, brother? Oh, you know, last week we had some fun talking about two important metrics. And and really it was kind of one metric is what is your average time per hour? But then I extrapolated that into a highest and best use rate. And that's something I don't see very many people doing. Uh, it's not something I've learned from anybody. In fact, it's something I do as a very competitive type A type person. I want to compete with myself. I want to continually best myself. And I want a stretch goal that's going to propel me forward in my business. So that's why you use that highest and best use metric. But today I'm going to talk about a different aspect. Those are kind of personal metrics around your own productivity. And they will drive your business if you're a solo entrepreneur style of business. But this metric that I'm going to talk about today is one single metric, and it is extremely powerful. And it is what even uh, Dropbox followed this exact metaphor for growth. So this is not something I invented. There are books written about it, and it's uh, commonly taught, though not as commonly followed, and it really should be. It's called the one metric that matters, one MTM, the one metric that matters. Now, when people hear that, they immediately think, oh, there's only one thing I need to track, and what is it? Yes and no. Yes, there's only one thing that you need to track. What is it is a very personal answer for you, and this is why the metric works. It is the mindset behind it is about narrowing your focus to the one single thing for your business today to drive your growth. The most important thing that will drive your growth, the lead domino for your business today. So I'll give you an example. One of my businesses, I won't say which one, but one of my businesses, I was meeting with the owners and we were having a discussion about some things that we needed to do. And there was a lot of, you know, we should change the the sales process. We should change this and that. I'm like, no, time out, guys. Stop. No, we're not doing any of that. All of those things are good, but this is a fairly new business. It has a few hundred paying subscribers monthly, but it hasn't hit the 1,000 member point, which is my personal litmus test after building a lot of software as a service companies and membership companies. I've probably had, I don't know, 25 or 30 different six or even seven figure level membership sites and software over the years. So I have my own personal metric. And for me, until we hit a thousand, you don't mess with that. Until you hit a thousand, it's just about getting more buyers. If you've got a process that's working, don't fiddle fuck around trying to like, you know, make it all perfect and, and put a tag here and do this. It's all just mental masturbation. Until you hit a thousand users, you need to focus on selling, 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 selling. Now, if your sales page isn't working, it's not converting, then yes, you got to fix it. But I'm saying don't waste your time on something that is good enough and is working until you get enough cash flow coming in by hitting that first level. Now, for me, it's a thousand. Some people, it might be 500 that they say, I've got to get to 500 level. You've got to assess that for yourself. But in that particular business, at this point in time, for where we are in the business growth cycle, that is our one metric that matters. It is about sales. And that's what we're focused on. Probably the most well-documented case study of this methodology of one metric that matters goes back to Dropbox. And if any of you kind of remember the early days of Dropbox, there was a, a long period of time where all Dropbox was doing was trying to get free users. All of their features, all of their marketing, all of their 
tactics. They tried out all different types of things, like for you to share a link with somebody to your account, they would have to set up a free user account. And they tried all kinds of these things, right? All kinds of tactics, but it was all geared around one metric. And that one metric was new user free trial accounts. Now, over time, they began to shift on a new metric and the new metric evolved to upgraded accounts. You know, how many new paying customers are we getting? We're no longer concerned with free. Well, now we're looking at how many paid customers are we getting? And it evolved over time. And, and today, a lot of it is focused around, I would argue, from just, I don't know their business model, of course, but just from observational feedback, I would say that today their one metric that matters is business accounts. Because I see that kind of escalation where they're really pushing more and more and more into their business accounts because it's bigger accounts. It's they're more stable accounts to generate more revenue and they renew at a higher rate and less drop off. And so it's easier. Right. But my point is, I can't tell you that the one metric you need right now, Jonathan, is leads. I can't tell you that. I don't know what your cycle is, where you are in your business. What I can tell you is that there is only one metric that really matters right now for the growth of your company. And if you don't know it, you damn well better find it. It should be so poignantly, painfully, abundantly clear to the most casual observer that you could be sitting on an island and you get an airdrop post-it that floats down to you on the island that you reach up and grab and it has nothing but a single number on it, 17. All right, cool. That tells me everything I need to know for my business. I'm on track. The Minions got it going. I don't even need to check in with them today. I'm just going to get back to sipping some more margaritas on the island. Okay. It should be that poignantly clear. There should be one number, a numeric number, and that metric, and you should be checking it daily. That should be a daily obsession that you have because it is the one single metric that matters. You know, if you're a podcaster influencer, maybe it's the number of podcasts you release. I don't know. Okay. It depends on the phase of your business and where you're at, but adopting this just laser tunnel vision on one single metric and doing everything around your business and your marketing to advance that one metric forward is what drives your business to the next level. And then at some point you have to reevaluate and say, okay, you know what? We've shifted. It's time to shift. We need to focus more on this, right? So it's not that this one metric matters forever. It's the one metric that matters for today to drive your business forward. How do you figure that out? Because it sounds like, I, I mean, it seems almost pretty standard, right? I mean, newer business or, or fledgling business, obviously it's going to be uh, leads. And then from the leads, it's going to go to sales. And then from sales, you're going into delivering whatever you deliver. So it, it turns into profit. So it, I guess you have to just review and, and, and know what matters at that point. Am I making enough money? <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. It's very individualized because where you can say it's just leads, that's fine if you've already got a full-time income and you're starting a, a job on the side. But if you lost your job and you got to make money right now, leads isn't what you need. You need sales. And that's a different concept. And people say, well, Troy, you got to have the leads to get the sales. Well, yes, sort of, not so much. You can get on the phone, you can hustle, you can go door to door and get some sales from targeted industries that you work in. The fastest way to six-figure income is through services. It's always going to be the case. And so though I love the highly leveraged and my specialty is continuity and, and SaaS programs and coaching, all of the things that are continuity-based, that's my preference because it's leveraged, right? And we get a lot more value per hour of our time. But in the beginning, the quickest way when you're unemployed and you got to make something happen is services. And if you could go out there and get 10 clients paying you $500 a month, and if you can make 50% profit margin on that, well, now you've got 5,000 a month coming in, you're making 2,500. Maybe that with your spouse or partner's income combined is enough to pay the rent, the mortgage and or car payment and get you started at a low end. Maybe you realize, no, I really got to have 20 clients at that 500 level. And so if I were progressing down that path, I probably would start out with a $500 service level offer. And then once I got that to where I was doing 10, 15,000 a month, then I would go you know, to the next level. All of this, of course, would be driven by email. 
Email is the core to everything we do here on the Go Berserk with Email podcast, right? Everything is focused around email. So clearly, I'm going to use that to drive more business. But this is this is the approach. It's not going to be the same for everybody. It really, truly isn't. Every single business is going to look at it different. If you're in a consultative sale type business where you're professional services, that one metric that matters may be a paid consult getting more $100 paid consult calls. Maybe you do free consult calls. If you do, I'm sorry. I value my time. <laughs> you can't make much money. You, you <laughs> described my whole business plan. Of, uh, of my. That was how it started. It was exactly that. Let's let's make 500 bucks. That's how we started. That's what Ben used to make fun of me. And then let's get go. this many clients. And now we have this many clients. Well, come on. I know, Ben. He has not stopped making fun of you. I mean, <laughs> Ben still makes fun of me. Yeah, Hell, my yeah, mom makes that's fun it. of me. My mom makes fun of me. I'm telling my, I was translating in Portuguese to my mother-in-law that I, that I burnt my fingertips a little bit in the fire and I was talking in Portuguese and my mom heard enough that she understood enough. She was standing next to me. She said, yeah, looks like that fire got a little bit on the top too because you lost a lot of hair. I'm like, I wish I could blame it on the fire, but I've been bald for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, I like it. I dig it. There, there's one number in any one of our businesses that matters right now. And I like that you straighten that out. You don't need leads. You may just need sales. And that's real. I mean, that's you need money, right? That's that. That's what matters. And we need to know that number. And it's very individual. So I dig that, man. What do you have coming up for us next time? The next podcast episode is going to be kind of fun because uh, I'm going to take one little point that was made in a review that was posted about Berserker Mail. And we're going to go deep on it because I think it's probably one of those little ticky tacky stupidity type things that email marketers focus on that really doesn't constrain or define their success with email marketing as a whole. And that is the use of preview text in your emails. Oh, I sense a rant coming on the next episode of Go Berserk with Email Show. You can just smell them, can't you? It's in the air. <laughs> like Phil Collins, it's in the air, baby. That's right. That is a wrap for this week. We will be back in your earbuds next time. To get a free Berserker Mail test drive with no credit card required, go to startmytestdrive.com. From there, you can play around inside the platform without pressure. Load up emails and campaigns to see how simple the interface is and get comfy with everything before deciding to join. That's startmytestdrive.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.